Hello, good evening, and welcome to Ion Port here on Metropolitan Television. Ion Port is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Goyle Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, and Meridian Port Services. The show is proudly powered by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, GPHA. Uh, this show is streaming live on our social media pages. On Facebook, we are streaming live at Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Still on Facebook, we are streaming live at Port of Tema. And on YouTube, we are streaming live at Ion Port Ghana. Our media partner is the Business and Financial Times, the BNFT. Now, if you want to have a grasp of all the transpired in the show tonight, make a date and grab the Thursday edition of the BNFT, and you'll be able to see all that happened here on the show tonight. As usual, we'll be getting interactive with you, and all you have to do is send us your comments and messages via our dedicated WhatsApp line, which is 0559-019-177, 0559-019-177. At the appropriate time, on our pick signals from our production team that the time is ripe, we shall activate the phone lines for you to call in and contribute to the discussion. My name is Kennedy Mona. We're going for a quick break. When we bounce back, we'll continue with the show. Please stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Go Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Go Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with the American Cargo Insurance Policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. <laughs> Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my Contractors or risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your known tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now. MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating great opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive.
All right, so you're welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry uh, during the week. And uh, during the week, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority happened to have joined the Burkina Faso Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, the uh, plush uh, Kempiski Hotel, where, you know, they interacted and uh, uh, had some discussions and also to show love and uh, some form of uh, camaraderie in terms of doing business uh, between the two countries, and uh, the GPHA took the opportunity to kind of like uh, award uh, the transit shippers who have been doing the business with the ports for the past uh, two decades or so or more. And uh, other activities also took, took place at that particular event. We'll bring you that story uh, pretty shortly. We also want to highlight the fact that GAP2, uh, which is the joint transport unions uh, at the ports, uh, also entered into an agreement with Road Safety Management Services Limited, and their quest is to uh, tow vehicles that get spoiled on the roads uh, so that uh, we can have seamless transport flow uh, on our roads in terms of doing business. And then we also have the Tema Shipyard, which is demonstrating its readiness to do business and to service uh, our sub-region and beyond in terms of ship repairs and others. Let's take a look at these stories and more. The Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Michael Lugoje, has reassured the business community of Burkina Faso of the authority's unwavering commitment to continue to make Ghana's ports and corridors the preferred option for transit trade. The GPHA boss made the authority's intentions known when a delegation from the Burkina Faso Chamber of Commerce, led by its president, Mahamadi Sabodogo, paid a working visit to the Port Authority to explore ways to enhance the business relationship the two parties share in the transit trade. The delegation made a few concerns known, such as port tariffs, the payment of VAT on transit goods charged by the GRA, and the harmonization of shipping line charges, among others. The DG of GPHA explained how the Port Authority is working closely with the government of Ghana to arrive at mutually beneficial solutions. The government really is unable for now to regulate shipping lines so we do it more at engagement and trade related levels <coughs> but it is, it is a matter of concern and the port authority the Ghana shippers authority and our ministry of transport we've been discussing this matter to see what arrangement can be in place. To regulate the shipping lines and charges. He called for increased collaboration between his outfit and the economic operators of Burkina Faso in research and information sharing towards the improvement of services for the transit business. Well, Any time it came to these matters of cost, where we have the same shipping lines in Ghana, the same in Togo and Côte d'Ivoire. We always want to compare what happens in Ghana and what happens in Côte d'Ivoire. But sometimes the comparison is not easy. And you need to do that when you have all the information and facts. Yeah, you have all the facts and information. And to get that information, we talk with our colleague port authorities. But we also have to rely a lot. We we'll rely on the shippers. We have to depend on the shippers because we have shippers that are doing Ghana, Togo, Côte d'Ivoire. They can give you facts to confirm what happens in Ghana, what happens in Togo. Elia. Members of the Burkina Faso Chamber of Commerce and Industry had held a partner's dinner as part of its five-day economic and trade promotion event in Accra. The just-ended five-day trade fair sought to promote economic, commercial, and cultural potentials, as well as strengthen cooperation between Burkina Faso and Ghana. The partner's dinner was to celebrate and magnify the historic relationship between the Burkina Faso Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Ghana and its partners. There, 
the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority seized the opportunity to award some of its transit trade partners for their loyalty to Ghana's ports. The president of regional consular delegation of Ubasan of the BFCCI, Al Hassan Seinu, said the Burkina Faso private sector through the Chamber of Commerce has an ambitious program for the next five years, which includes the implementation of major projects to support the socio-economic development of their country. The dynamic is to be able to strengthen our business needs. Therefore, we plan to pursue exchanges with you in order to establish a win-win partnership between your respective countries and Burkina Faso. In this context of current international crisis marked by insecurity, health and economic problems, only solidarity and dynamic partnership can enable us to strengthen our resilience and consolidate the foundation of economic prosperity within the framework of the African Free Trade Area. On his part, the Director General of GPHA, Michael Lugoje, reiterated GPHA's objective for the transit trade. I want to use this opportunity to just give Ashore, Burkina Faso, business community and shippers, together with our partners, Ghana Shippers Authority, Ensemble, avec notre partenaire du Conseil Ghana de Tahir, and all the other public and private enterprises that are working in Ghana to facilitate Burkina Faso transit trade through our ports. The Joint Association of Port Transport Unions, Jab to Ghana, has entered into an agreement with Road Safety Management Services Limited to roll out the mandatory track towing program. Stakeholders within the maritime trade and road transport sectors assembled at a sign-in ceremony in Tema on Thursday, September 29, 2022, to mark the commencement of the program. The program will see all track owners benefit from track towing and salvage services nationwide at an annual premium of 450 CDs. This agreement is expected to solve some of Ghana's road safety challenges. One of such is the abandonment of tracks in the middle of highways and shoulders of roads, leading to the risk of motor accidents and road congestions. The agreement will also relieve track owners from the tedious process of securing an efficient, competent track towing service provider and its associated costs. For the maritime trade, efficient and competent towing services will mean shortened turnaround time for the delivery of cargo on land. What is even very exciting about this agreement is the fact that the road safety management services has to react to our requests within prescribed times. For example, if you are in a regional capital or a district capital, once you make a call to the call center, which is toll free, within an hour, they have to come and tow you to safety. And safety means anywhere that is suitable enough for you to do the repair, and if it is salvaging in the event of an accident, safety means towing the car to a place where it can be safely what, impounded and the cargo, if there's any cargo, is also safely secured. We have put a contingency plan, an operational plan, very efficient one, locating accident prone areas, areas where vehicles often break down, and other operational and strategic areas to be able to meet our demand in terms of coming in less than an hour's time and where it is far, beating it to less than two hours to tow your vehicle to an impact. The safety of all is paramount. For this reason, we are thankful and really appreciating that JAPTU has taken the initiative to join with these other stakeholders, the towing services and the police, to come up with such a positive initiative that will give peace of mind to the drivers, peace of mind to the truck owners, and peace of mind to the road users, so that business can go on. The Tema Shipyard has recently proven it remains committed to delivering efficient, world-class ship repair and maintenance services at its facility. This commitment was demonstrated when the shipyard was able to turn around Ship Didi, an oil chemical tanker, three days ahead of its 10-day target, enabling a timely return 
to sea of the vessel. The tanker sailing under the flag of Nigeria with a length of 176 meters and carrying capacity of 40,219 dead weight tonnage called the Tema Shipyard for general dry dock services such as welding works, sandblasting and painting, the overhaul of the main suction and overboard valves among others. Oh, I want to assure our customers that um, Tema Shipyard is still committed to quality. Even though the yard has been in existence for years and our equipment seems to be a bit outmoded, but the customers themselves can attest to the fact that we give out quality work. The like Thomas Shipper is 65. We are simply trying to say that when you bring in your vessel here to the Thomas Shipyard, you are sure to receive services that are internationally um, accepted. So our business processes and then our work instructions and other documentations that sum up to the ISO is simply structured in a way that your vessel would be well attended to and then across international standards. I again entreat all our customers and our clients to come to shipyard because as we have moved from the previous standard that we used to, now we are in ISO, so things have changed here. All the safety precautions and the measures that we need to put in place to make sure your vessels are work on and then you go back free and safely. Chief Engineer Samuel Kwesia Mwakon, Technical Superintendent of another vessel, MV Manye, that called the dry dock, praised the services at the Tema shipyard and called for further investment to help the shipyard reach its full potential. Uh, I'm expecting the dock to do a very good job for us. So far, what they've been doing is quite encouraging. There are men um, abreast with time and uh, they are working according to the timeline we have given to them. The Ghana Exports Promotion Authority, in collaboration with the African Coconut Group, has held the second edition of the International Coconut Festival in Accra. The 2022 edition of the International Coconut Festival, themed repositioning Ghana's coconut sector for accelerated industrialization, was aimed at exploring ways of expedited growth of the sector by adding value to the raw materials produced from coconut. The three-day event, which brought together farmers, exporters, exhibitors, students, public officials, and traditional authorities, among others, is aimed at encouraging more Ghanaians to venture into the coconut sector to boost production and export. Coconuts from Ghana is in high demand globally, and thus, GEPA has initiated a number of initiatives that are expected to improve upon the country's position as the world's ninth leading producer. GEPA has since 2017 provided a total of 600,000 disease tolerant seedlings to coconut farmers to help boost the industry. Speaking at the sidelines of the closing ceremony, Deputy Chief Executive Officer at GEPA, Samuel Dintu said, Ghana intends to increase its market share in terms of coconut production globally. We have some seedlings that has been cultivated today or even two years ago and I mean that are nearing um, yield, yielding or uh, near, nearing bearing fruits. So in the next year you'll see a lot of productivity coming online and we want to inch closer to um, being number one or being f part of the first five production countries and also the processing which is the most important thing for us um, as a government one of the um, one one of the vision or one of the agenda um, of the of its excellency nanadu dangpa kufadu is that we turn um, our 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 economy into an industrialized one so this actually is fitting into that agenda. Chairman of the African Coconut Group, David Cowboy, urged government to reclaim Galamse lands for coconut production. Coconut is the best way to reclaim the Galamse land. In the sense that if you look at coconut as a royal palm, that is the only way to go to be able to reclaim the Galamse lands. And that's why we are saying that government should be able to use coconut to do that and give the farmers, when I talk about the farmers, give the industry players the chance to be able to do that. If government in this way can collaborate with their chiefs to reclaim the lands while they give it to the farmers, government support with seedlings, their tech extension services, research and other things for us to be able to plan to reclaim the lands. All right, so those were happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. It's now time for us to zoom into our discussion proper tonight. And tonight we are taking a look at the role of emerging technologies to support uh, a green transition of the maritime of the maritime sector. And 
29th of September, that was just last month, uh, a few days ago, um, Ghana joined the rest of the world to celebrate International Maritime Day. Now, International Maritime Day is used to focus attention on the works of the International Maritime Organization, IMO, and its regional or national uh, affiliates. In Ghana, uh, the Ghana Maritime Authority is the national affiliate of the International Maritime Organization, IMO, and I dare say that Ghana has been a very active member of the IMO for some time now, and it keeps blazing the trail. I dare mention Dr. Emmanuel, Dr. Kofimbia, Dr. Emmanuel Kofimbia, who at a point was the um, chairman of the legal committee of the International Maritime Organization for two consecutive terms, the first black man to have achieved that feat, uh, you know, and he still remains the first black man to have chaired that particular committee. And the legal committee of the IMO is one of the most sensitive and very, very important, you know, committees of the International Maritime Organization. So that tells you how far we've come in our, in, in our quest to, you know, actively participate in activities of the International Maritime uh, organization IMO. Now, the theme for this year's uh, celebration is what we're discussing today, the role of emerging technologies, um, you know, to support a green transition. Um, we'll bring you the details as we move along. But statistics or research also indicates that uh, commercial shipping uh, accounts for about 2.5 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions. And this is expected to catapult or to escalate to between 50 and 250 percent by the year 2050, uh, which makes it very important for nations to take steps to quell uh, this particular trend. And so tonight, that's what we're looking at. Uh, it gives me pleasure to introduce to us um, Dr. Captain Nana Ofosubwaten, Senior Lecturer, Head of National uh, and Head of the Nautical Studies Department at the Renal Maritime University. Doc, uh, Captain, welcome. And I also have the pleasure of introducing to us in the studios um, Captain Samuel Ofori Dankwa, who is a Senior Marine Officer uh, the Ghana Maritime Authority. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, Commander uh, Emmanuel, um, Commander Christopher Arma of the Ghana Navy uh, will also be joining us via Zoom uh, to discuss this particular subject. He is a marine engineer. We'll come to our guests in the studios pretty shortly, but before then, let's go and take a message from the Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Mr. Thomas Kofi Alonsi, as he joined the rest of the world to give a solidarity message on the occasion of the International Maritime Day. The International Maritime Organization is the United Nations specialized agency with responsibility for the safety and security of shipping and the prevention of marine and atmospheric pollution by ships. Ghana, our beloved country, is a member of the IMO and the Ghana Maritime Authority is the agency that represents Ghana at the International Maritime Organization. Today, in many countries all over the world, we are celebrating the World Maritime Day. The day coincides with the establishment of the International Maritime Organization in 1958 and provides an opportunity to focus attention on the importance of shipping and other maritime activities. The World Maritime Day also provides a forum to highlight the significant contribution of the International Maritime Organization and its member states to global efforts in improving the safety, security, and efficiency of shipping and the protection of the marine and atmospheric environment. As a responsible industry concerned with sustainable economic growth and progress, and considering the fact that our planet is imperiled, it has become necessary to note that the rapid increase in international shipping with its attendant daily consumption of millions of barrels of fuel oils also brings about a significant increase in the emission of noxious gases into the atmosphere. It is for this reason that this year's celebration has been dedicated to focusing attention on the need to transition into a greener and more sustainable shipping regime under the team, New Technologies for Greener Shipping. Whilst taking this opportunity to express my gratitude to all stakeholders in the maritime industry who have, in their various ways, contributed positively to sustain our activities, I also wish to encourage key stakeholders in the industry to help in developing and implementing strategies to build our understanding and knowledge of technologies and operational measures that will lead to a sustainable shipping industry. On this note, on behalf of the International Maritime Organization, the Ghana Maritime Authority, and on my own behalf, I wish you a happy World Maritime Day 
And may the Almighty God continue to bless our industry and our homeland Ghana and make them great and strong. That was the message from the Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Mr. Thomas Kofi Alonsi. We are now coming into the studios to uh, begin the discussions. Okay, I understand uh, Captain Christopher Ama, uh, who is with the Ghana Navy, uh, is right on uh, line uh, on Zoom, and uh, he'll be joining us pretty shortly. Uh, let me acknowledge his presence. Hello, uh, Doc. Uh, uh, Commander, good evening. Yes, please. Uh, it's the Lieutenant Commander Ama. Good evening. Commander Ama. Lieutenant Commander. Lieutenant Commander. Oh, okay. Yes, then we, have, we have to correct that. I've, I've been uh, calling you Commander, 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 so I don't put you in trouble. <laughs> All right. So how is Takrade? Takrade is, is good. I hope you are doing well, too. We are terrific, by his grace. Thank you very much, indeed. We're happy to have you. Um, we, we, I don't know whether you, you monitored my intro. We, we are discussing the role of emerging technologies uh, to support the transition uh, into a green, to su support the green transition of the maritime sector. And you know, recently we had the World Maritime Day celebrations. That was just on Thursday, and uh, we're looking at efforts at uh, trying to quell uh, the menace of greenhouse gas emissions in the shipping sector. Um, I just want to find out from you, first of all, what do you make of uh, the celebrations that we've been having every year, that's International uh, Maritime Day celebrations. Thank you for the question, Mona. Um, I think the World Maritime Day celebration is very, very significant in making the effort to uh, make the whole world know the importance of shipping for the development of our economies. Uh, generally, I believe that shipping also brings the world together. And it, as, as, in as much as possible, also the World Maritime Day is making it sound the negative effects that the maritime activities is causing to our environment as well. And so it, it's, it's how critical it is for us to act as a unified global community as well to find solutions to these negative effects from the maritime industry to allow the shipping industry to continue serving its purpose for the development of countries and economies all over the world. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to find out from you what, what you make of the theme too, but I think you just made mention uh, of it. And so I would come to uh, Nana, Dr. Um, Wating and find out from you what you make of this year's celebrations. Yeah, thank you, Kenneth. If you can draw your mic close to you a bit, that would do us a great love good, yeah. Yes, thank you, Kennedy. Um, this year's celebration talks about um, new technologies for um, greener shipping. shipping yeah. And I think that's the way to go mm -hmm. because um, basically it's been more of lip service where people talk of pollution and our ecosystem, which is fragile, mm -hmm. where we are and being polluted. But of course, we can harness the, the need and also we can harness technology to assist us in coming to our goals or realizing our needs with regards to um, um, the domain in which we are, which is uh, the maritime domain. Mm -hmm. So I think the theme for this year is, is good. Um, it, it draws the fact that we can use new ways to solve an old problem. Mm. And I think that's a laudable thing. Mm. All right, so let me come to uh, Captain Ofosun Kansa. Oforin Kansa. Dankwa. Ofori Dankwa. Ofori Dankwa, yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much indeed. Um, you work for the Ghana Maritime Authority. Yes. And the Ghana Maritime Authority is the national affiliate of the International Maritime Organization. Uh, so to speak, I would be right if I say it's the representative of the IMO yes. in, in Ghana. And uh, you spearheaded the celebrations for this year. What were some of the activities you undertook to mark this year's celebrations? Uh, the we thank, you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The Director General was very uh, good to us. I think he organized a lot of seminars to um, educate the shipping communities and the industry players mm. because they play a major role. Without them, the global supply chain will not be able to, uh, co I would say, get to a complete stage. Mm. So, and this year, the team for me, what he did was excellent because 
it opened up a forum for new technologies to be discussed. Mm. And that is what he really did. At the, so he called some few people from the, in the uh, industry, that the industry players, and ideas were shared. Mm. And I think that was what happened. So at the there. end of the day, would you say you realized the objective for which this year's celebrations was yes. locally, as, yes. as in, in Ghana? Yes, yes. In Ghana, it was, to me, excellent. Because uh, once the open conversation was done, I think um, that the goal was achieved. Mm. Yeah, because everybody is trying to meet the um, UN Sustainable Development Goal, Goals, yeah. which is supposed to, uh, I would say, end around 2030. Mm. And I think everybody is playing his part to make sure that we achieve that goal. Awesome. All right, so let me go online and speak to Lieutenant Commander Christopher Hammer. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, everybody's talking about sustainable uh, future. Sustainable. Is he on? Okay, yes. Everybody's talking about uh, sustainable shipping uh, sector, that's, uh, you know, for the future. And I just want to find out from you how important it is for us to all rally around this particular theme and ensure that we have a sustainable uh, future in terms of uh, shipping. Um, it, it's important to have a sustainable maritime industry because um, when you look at the world population, we are increasing and we are hitting close to 8 billion people on the planet. And it calls for a lot of energy demand. And once countries are developing, it means that there will be transport of goods from one country to another. And the best and the cheapest way of transport is shipping, because you, are, you will be able to transport huge cargo from shipping. It, it, it is cheaper than other means of transport. Also, shipping's emission is better than other means of transport. So if, if we don't push ourselves to try as much as possible to make it sustainable and to protect our environment, it means that uh, if we are going to increase transportation on our oceans, it means that our emissions are going to go beyond the 2.5 that we are all estimating. Thank you. Now, can you bring us up to speed with some of the activities that kind of like affect the oceans? Hello, Lieutenant Commander. Yes, thank you, Mona. Yes, thank you, Mona, once again. Um, with activities that affect our oceans, we have the carriage of goods. That's what I mentioned earlier on, mm. from one country to another. And some of these goods are chemicals. We have liquefied gases and other noxious liquid substances that are carried on our oceans. And uh, we also have oil extraction that is going on. Is the same ships that carry the oil from the oil fields to the refineries for them to be refined after refinery. These products are also transported from these countries to other countries that need this lubricants and all these oil products. Also, we have fishing that is going on. We have minerals extraction. And there are paints and then chemicals that are used on board the, 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 and for maintenance of the ships. So you, you realize that all these chemicals and all these products that I'm, I, I am mentioning, if they are not properly handled, they are going to pollute the, man, the marine environment. Even just the movement of the ship on the water, we have issues with underwater noise, which affects the mammals. For example, the whales use, they use sound to travel. So when you have ships that are traveling on our oceans with the propellers rotating underwater, it distracts their, 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 their living conditions under the water. Also, a typical example of oil pollution is the Exxon Valdez, which happened uh, in Mexico. That was one of the devastating oil spills. And after 30 years, we still have pockets of some of these crude or, or, oil remaining in, in some areas, which caused the, the, the death of hundreds of millions of uh, animals in the oceans. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Please don't go. Stay with us. Uh, you are going to stick with us throughout the discussions. Let me come to uh, Captain Samuel Ofori Dankwa and find out from you. Um, per your role, you are a senior marine officer at the Ghana Maritime Authority. And per your role, I know that you mount vessels and ships and other platforms at sea to inspect them and ensure that they uh, do the right things. What are some of the things that you discover when you, when you, you at sea, when you go to inspect some of the, these vessels? And what do you look out for? Our as an administrator, we are just into implement the international and the local policies. Mm. And the MAPO, the Maritime Pollution Convention, has spelled everything out. Mm. So we make sure that we, the vessels or the platforms that are around are really doing what they are expected to do. For instance, you talk about the oil, like our Commander said, 
oil spillage now uh, there is a, a unit or let, let me say equipment on board called the oil water separator mm. and it has a monitoring gadget which makes sure that certain amount of oil does not go out of the ship into the water mm. so when we go there we make sure it is working and not only working but the crew are able to operate and operate it correctly right. and you have sewage treatment plan they are also able to work and everything is in order you can talk about the garbage policy which is uh, from the mapo so we make sure all these things are being well implemented mm. not to forget about the uh, the air pollution that we, uh, gma is having equipment that we test the fuel mm. to ensure that the sulfur content is at the right proportion the appropriate or acceptable sulfur content is 0.5 yeah. yes there is no um it, we have emission control areas mm. so within the emission control areas it is very less 0.05 mm. percent okay. but outside the emission control areas that's where we have 0.10 percent mm. mm. so we we have this uh, gadget analyzer that we check the fuel that is on board to make sure that they are within the right proportion mm. and aside that we have um, exhaust gas analyzer so if we suspect that you are bringing out a certain kind of smoke which is not environmentally friendly we make sure we go with our gadget to check mm. so we do all this our a, a lot of people think our aim is just to go and find a ship no mm. a policeman on the road is not ready to go and just get people arrested but once you are there your presence alone will just call, uh, give proper monitoring mm. so that is what we normally do when we go on a ship okay and what are some of your findings when you go up and, and you you i mean ramp can you just mention some the common ones that you, you find out yes the most common ones that we see is uh, operation that's mm. training mm. they have the equipment they have the everything but most of them are unable to operate them right so it's something i think we have already informed imo and they are working on this new technologies if mm. the technologies are there and the training is not there is zero we can't really go far mm. so those are the basic ones we find and garbage especially garbage they throw a lot of garbage on our waters so once we go we try to calculate mm. if you have you, you have 20 people on a ship how much garbage will you have been able to we have better i would say good engineers and captains who do all those things mm. and make sure that the um the violators are brought into book mm. all right thank you very much Indeed. let me come to dr captain nana Boating and find out from you of course Boating, yes and, and find out from you um the cost that we have to bear globally in our quest to transition to green and to ensure that we reduce to the barest minimum you know uh, greenhouse gas emissions hey, thank how you. enormous is it i just wanted to paint a mental picture of what the situation is at the moment yes um to transition to um greener methods of yes. of trying to mm. solve these problems it's very monumental mm. actually um from a research that's been done uh, it's running into trillions of dollars. dollars. You know, it's not only that um, we need land-based infrastructure, but you would also would need sea-based infrastructure also. Mm -hmm. I want to give a vivid example. Like, for instance, if you want to discharge oil waste, you need port facilities that would have the, the, res the receptacles or mm -hmm. the, the, there should be a receiving area where the dirty sludge or the dirty oil could be sent over to. Mm. Same applies to garbage disposal and, and stuff like that. Mm. And all of these things call for, for, for money to do that. So you realize that putting all the aggregates together, it's, it's quite monumental and it's running into trillions of dollars if we want to transition into that. Mm. You, you listen to the submissions of uh, Lieutenant Commander Ama and then uh, Captain um, Ufuri uh, Dankwa. And what do you make of their submissions in terms of um, what the findings are? some of the activities that impact negatively and contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. Yes. Um, and if you have a fair idea of what Ghana's situation is like. Yeah, I think they said it all. I mean, first and foremost, uh, sometimes we, we tend to believe that these things don't exist, but they do exist. Mm -hmm. And just like um, Captain Samuel said, um, GMA is really doing well in making sure that there's always a check. Mm -hmm or I would want to say they are always doing some policing work. Um, for me, from, from where I stand, I think that going forward, um, 
the kind of sanctions that they give to vessels that flaunt the, the rules mm. or are not abiding by whatever standards they have to engage in would have to be looked at. Because if the, if the measures are punitive enough, that could scare them from, from doing what is, what is wrong. Mm. Um, of course, again, I, I readily agree with them. Sometimes the equipment could be on board, but some, uh, the training to use them might not be there. Mm. Or sometimes there's a little bit of misunderstanding when it comes to mixed crew. Yeah. You know, sometimes the vessels don't have one, one kind of crew on board. It could be a mixed crew. And sometimes communication gaps and problems like that do exist. And these have a ripple effect on how to operate some of these systems going forward. Mm. Okay. All right, so um, I just want to come back to uh, Lieutenant uh, Commander Christopher Ama. Uh, you, you had a captain submission um, that it will take trillions of dollars in our quest to go green, to transition uh, to green. And I just want to find out from you, as African Post, we are a bit already, uh, what we call it, under, uh, at a disadvantage. I just want to find out from where we should start from as Post in Africa in our quest to transition to green whether you think that there should be some form of consolidation of efforts, uh, you know, across board. Yeah. Hello. Thank you, Mona. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you look at some statistics, you realize that majority of port calls and bunker sales, that is fueling of ships, takes place in developed countries, in developing countries. And developing countries as well, they are dominant in supplying seafarers and then ship registration. So I believe that what the African ports can learn is to look at, for example, the port of Antwerp, where they use circular economy. And circular economy is trying as much as possible to recycle the waste that is generated from the ports and from the ships. And they are used to generate energy or power as well to ele electrify the ports so that we will try as much as possible to reduce our dependency of the ports on the national grid, which could also, that power as well can be used to serve other places within the country. So the other aspect also is to look at research into biofuels, which have hydrogen and it's, it's available everywhere. Uh, some statistics from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations indicates that there are 124 countries which produce sugar. So it means that if we want to go into biofuels, it is possible. And it is a good time for us to invest. And I believe that our return on investment will be very profitable if we should start something now. And for consolidation between the African countries, it is very, very important for us to look at what are our weaknesses and what are our strengths. It, it shouldn't be a competition to try as much as possible to make some revenue from um, this particular opportunity. But I think coming together in terms of looking at how we are going to do our training, how we are going to do our research, how we are going to look at into manufacturing and the production of all these fuels is going to help us together as an African country. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Let me come to Dr. Captain Anofus Wating and find out from you. Do you have any other view apart from what um, Commander, Lieutenant Commander Ama has espoused? Well, I think... African ports, our quest to transition to green. Where are we starting from? Well, Given I, the capital-intensive nature of transitioning. Yeah, I think um, from the capital-intensive in, 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 uh, nature of, of going green, mm. I think the first thing we'd have to do as African ports is to kind of come together. You know, um, we can't be a standalone or do it alone. Mm. Stakeholders should be engaged more thoroughly, mm. and and also um, there should be a, a point where the stakeholders could could be brought to a point that they would be willing to to at least put something in to start from somewhere. Mm. Um, of course, not all the countries are very stable economically, so going forward, it's it's going to be a little slow. Mm. Some countries could could do it quite quicker, but others might be falling behind. Mm. So. Looking at it, it should be a collective thing. It should be collective. We should all try to, all the poor should come together. And then um, with the stakeholders also being drawn on board. And then we can find a common ground where we can look at it and solve it holistically. Mm -hmm. But it should not be some kind of um, individual thing where 
probably one one person would want to or one shipping company would want to take that as as its main goal mm. in trying to solve it. Mm. Great. All right, let me come to Captain Samuel Ofori uh, Dankwa and final from the Ghana Maritime Authority. Uh, can you bring us up to speed with some of the initiatives you have undertaken or you are undertaking uh, to help our quest to transition? Yeah, thank you very much. But before I come there, let me chip in something small about the cost right. aspect of it. Okay. For me, we can mention money or any value, but mm. my side, I, I think the effort and the consciousness of people doing what they are supposed to do mm. means a lot right. in terms of cost. Mm. Because if everybody is supposed to do what he's supposed to do, I don't think we are supposed to spend a lot of or a huge amount of money right. to curtail that. Mm. Now, let me come back to that. This. When you say is every, if everybody is supposed, is, 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 does what he or she is supposed to do, what do you yes. mean by that? Um, for instance, you get to most of the ports, and instead of inspecting, they are taking money. Yeah. You get to other places where seafarers are supposed to do what by not throwing any garbage overboard. Mm. They look in uh, African terrain, there are no uh, cameras, there are nothing. You go to China, Singapore, they have these gadgets that are monitoring 24 7. Mm. So even nighttime, when you throw any, even a small amount of something in the sea, mm. they're able to get you pictures once you arrive at the port. Right. But these seafarers are aware that. We are handicapped in this area, so they do it within our waters. Mm. Just like Lieutenant Commander said, why are they doing a lot of bunkering on, on our waters mm. within the African terrain? Because nobody is checking them. Yeah. It is good that Ghana Maritime Authority has acquired a lot of crafts. Yeah. The, currently, Tema is having about six, mm. Takrad is having four, mm. and along the coast, we try to go in every blessed day, morning and afternoon and evening, trying to monitor any illegal activity that is going on. Mm. So if we are not having that mindset of change. Yeah. Some people will be leading, others will not be leading. Absolutely. So that is where my stand comes in. Perfect. I agree. I agree. Yes, you are going to continue yes. with your submission. Yes. On, uh, on a second note, Ghana Maritime Authority, like I said, we are having a state-of-the-art craft mm. called Yasantua. Mm. Yasantua is having a camera that is infrared, so we can even zoom in into your ship mm. and at very night time, and know exactly whatever you are doing. And it can even penetrate at certain materials, like uh, metals. It can get into so that we are able to know what exactly you are doing. And we mm. keep the recordings. We have our uh, camera all around. So we don't have to even confront you. Mm. With the evidence is the game. Yeah. So once we have the evidence, then we can bring you to book. Mm. Aside the craft, we have the analyzers, which is very expensive. Mm. Currently, we are not having enough. We are having only two. Mm. And if we have almost about 20 ships calling our ports almost every two weeks or every week. Mm. You can imagine if I am using it, my colleague will not be able to get to use mm. it. So some of these things come into play. Mm. But uh, uh, GMA, I would say as an administrator, they are doing very well mm. compared to other ports. I have, I have been to so many ports, Cote d'Ivoire and the rest, and African ports, I would say GMA is really on top. Mm. Considering the MPS aspect of it, mm. as we can all see, MPS has come to a stand whereby the port alone is really reducing that, um, I'll say, emission. Yeah. The state of it, the, uh, the kind of infrastructure that is there. Yeah. So if you go back into the Sustainable Development Goal 9, which is talking about the infrastructure, innovative, they are, Ghana is trying to cut all those things. Mm. And if you come back to the 14, which is the life under sea. Right. Ghana is also doing everything possible to make sure that we patrol our waters and we inspect properly. Mm. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much. Let me let me come to um, uh, um, uh, Captain uh, Doctor Captain uh, you know Nana Ofosu Boating and find out from him. he made mention of some of the illegalities and some of the challenges that we face in our quest to ensure that the right thing is done. He says we can put the value monetary value on our quest to transition. No matter the amount, if the attitude is not right, we can't get there. And he mentioned the fact that some regulators would go onto their vessels and take money. They won't, you know, kind of like do the right thing. They won't take, like, okay, I find something wrong with you. I'm supposed to sanction you, to, to note it down and sanction you. I don't. I take peanuts, I get off, and you are left off the hook. And he says sometimes we have people who look around because there's no camera watching them. There's nobody at sea to monitor them. They litter and then they go. 
And so if we do everything we can, we have all the money, we splash it, and we go, you know, in our quest to go green, and we still have some of these things happening, we can't get anywhere. What should we be doing in terms of our attitude? Yeah, thank you very much. I think that um, basically we should also be looking at the maritime education and training aspect mm. because it's all about a mindset. Mm. If the person's mindset is, 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 is positive and it's okay, why would somebody put garbage which is not treated into the oceans or mm. why would somebody pour mm. oily waste into the water? Um, where, where I stand, um, at the moment, if you are a rating and before you, you should ever join a vessel, you need to do a, a pre-sea vocational training mm. where you are taken through the rudiments of, of seamanship and some of these things with regards to pollution and everything. So at least the conscience is, I mean, the awareness is there before you go on board. It was, it's not as if from the very, very old days where anybody could just obtain a discharge book mm. and go on board and call himself a seafarer. It's not like that anymore. So the awareness slowly is, is coming through maritime education and training mm. where the seafarer, right from the, the, the written, with the officers, of course, there's no way you can be an officer without learning MAPO or knowing anything about oil pollution. Mm. But sometimes with the written, um, some might not be too aware of some of these um, adverse effects of polluting the environment. Mm. But slowly we are into this, this kind of maritime education and training. Thing. So before the person goes on board, he's way aware. So I think the message should also go across. And all in all, it should be about a mindset. Mm. If the mindset is good, then the person would want to do the right thing, even if he's not under the surveillance of a yeah, camera yeah. or something. He would do the right thing mm. because it's been inculcated in him. Mm. So he's going to do the right thing. But Again, maybe we would have to spend a little bit more time on educating, um, educating our seafarers mm. and people who are related to the maritime domain. Right. And I think if more education goes out and people are more conscious of, of it, things like this will not be happening. Mm. Absolutely. All right, so let me go back to uh, the lines and uh, find out from our Lieutenant Commander Christopher Arma. Um, what you think is the greatest pollutant? Most of the time, the ordinary man out there he thinks that, okay, he has had oil spillage, and so yes, uh, that is it. Is, is that the only thing we should be looking out for, or what are some of the, uh, what is the greatest pollutant of our, uh, from shipping? Thank you very much, Mona. Um, for pollution from shipping, uh, ships causes uh, a lot of air pollution. Mm. Right. Ships in the, the harbor, you have a you see something either white or black coming out from uh, the exhaust funnels or something. So that is the exit of these pollutants that later goes on to affect the marine environment. And so these pollutants also have adverse effects uh, on human health mm. and contribute to the wide reaching effects of climate. Hello, left a lot of fuel. That is mm. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, please I think can you we have some, some, you know. Yes, commercial ships burn a lot of fuel for energy, and they emit several types of air pollution, air pollution as byproducts. Mm. So, like the ship source pollutants are most closely. Yes. I think we're having challenges uh, with Lieutenant Commander's uh, line. Uh, that's what uh, technology can do. Okay, I, I, I understand he's back. Are you back, uh, Commander? Okay. Okay, left hand corner. Yeah, I can hear you. Please continue. Yes. Yes. So some of the pollutants we have are carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide. We have sulfur oxide, and then we have particulate matter. But I will go in for the carbon dioxide because it contributes to a widespread that is the, the climate change that, that, because it traps. Wow, I think <laughs> we're, we're having. Okay, yes. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, I think we're, we're having challenges with this line. Uh, that's what technology does sometimes. But um, uh, uh, Lieutenant, uh, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Captain, uh, okay, let's try one more time and see uh, whether it will, it will be stable this time. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Ama. Hello, Mona, please, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 
Please shoot. Whoa. I'll go in for carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide traps the heat of the sun, and that is where we have. Wow. I think he got to the crux of his submission, and then I, we, we're having these challenges. Uh, you are back, yeah? Please, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Please, Flo. Can I go? Yes. Can I go on? Yes. You mentioned okay. carbon dioxide, yes. Hello, Lieutenant Commander. Of the sun. Mm. In the atmosphere. Okay. No. I, I think I think I think it's not it's not, it's not helping. It's lying. It's not it's not helping. We are having challenges. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. Add, yes. All right. The Maybe greatest pollutant. He, yeah. Yes. Yeah. What he is trying to talk about the carbon, the CO two emission. Yes. Which normally traps the heat uh, of the sun and it causes a lot of environmental damage. As yes. currently we are experiencing irregular. Um, Sea path, uh, that's rain yes. pattern and other things. Mm. And the climate change has become one of the most, I would say, significant um, talk about issue because if we lose this, our planet, we don't know where we have to go next. And not to forget about the marine pollutant, we've talked about it, but the biodiversity, we need to preserve that. And in preserving our biodiversity, we have to make sure that nothing goes into the sea Mm. to go and damage the, uh, the life below the sea. Mm. So for him, uh, like I said, as he was talking about, the main concern is about the air pollution, mm. which damages a lot of the ozone. And that is what is causing most of the glaciers in the uh, icy areas to melt. And once they melt, the sea surface will rise. And once the sea surface rises beyond certain limits, islands will sink. Mm. And some of the places will go down. If you pass through our local area in Ghana here, Sakamono Beach and the rest, before you could see most of their structures were way forward. But mm. now they've been covered, not to think about the island somewhere. So if we are not regulating and getting everybody involved, making people understand that this is the only thing we have, Every, all must come in, mm. then we are going to just cause the damage very soon. And mm. that is why I think the sustainable development goal that is trying to also get out. I think the 13 is also talking about that. Right. So we will try to see how best we can work on that. All right. I understand Lieutenant Commander Ama is back on the line. Yes. This time his line is good. Let's, let's try him again. Yes, uh, Lieutenant Commander. Yes, Mona. Yes, I understand your line is smooth this time around. Let's try. Please, is it better? Yes, it is. It's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for... So you were at carbon dioxide? Yes. When the line went cranky. I think it's, it's gone cranky again. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. All right, so please flow. Captain is saying... Am, am I clear? Yes. Yes. Okay, to add to what Captain is saying, um, this carbon dioxide also ends up at the sea there. And it eats off what we call the coral reefs. Yeah. And coral reefs contribute very much in the food chain for marine life. Mm. So when that particular uh, element under the oceans, which is the coral reefs, are uh, Okay. <laughs> Biodiversity will be affected. I, I think I think uh, Lieutenant Commander's line is, is being problematic. So let's let's come to you. He mentioned coral reefs. Uh, can you tell us what he, he was trying to espouse? Yeah, he uh, what he is trying to say is that the marine um, I would say the marine life depend on one another. Mm. So they are a kind of groups that are below the water. Mm. So do they depend on that? And once this carbon dioxide goes up and it causes uh, it just falls back into the sea because it will move into the clouds and again the rain will cause it back there and it will eat it up, causing it dry. So it's just like you having the dry season in Ghana here, whereby all the green grass and all the leaves are dry. Mm. It means no bed or nobody will be able to make use of it. Yeah. So this CO2 effect 
will generally go down. And once they eat up all the, um, the living things that are down there, it means the human lives are also going to be affected. Right. Let's imagine uh, we're staying for about a year without any sea uh, food. Mm. I don't know how many people are going to feel. You go Survive, to Asia, yeah. that is all that they depend on. Yeah. Seafood is everything that they Absolutely. depend on. They are not after any of the uh, goods and the martin yeah, and sure. the, those things. So if we are not preserving the marine environment, at the end, everybody is going to be, uh, have the effects. Mm. So I think Dr. has, uh, in that category, I would say Dr. has a lot to share. Okay. All right, Doc, you share with us, but we'll go for a break now. And uh, I just wish to remind listeners that uh, you are tuning into Metro TV and the program is out on port. And tonight we are discussing the role of uh, emerging technologies to support the transition uh, green transition of the shipping or maritime sector uh, in our part of the world and globally. And uh, we, this comes on the back of the uh, recently celebrated International Maritime Day, which was on Thursday, uh, the 29th of September 2022. Um, I was told we we're going to go for a break, but I've been told that uh, we can move on. And so let me come to Captain uh, in the studios and then find out from you. Uh, uh, you know, Captain says you have, uh, you are well versed uh, with some information on this particular uh, area. Um, with, with regards to air pollution, it's, for me, it's, it's actually they really have talked a lot about the effects of the um, carbon dioxide or the greenhouse gas effect. Um, but we do also have other pollutants, um, which is sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide also, that is uh, the SOX and NOx. And these also cause a lot of harm to the environment. Mm. And sometimes uh, rainfall patterns are altered, and sometimes also the quality of rain that comes in, like acid rain, which is very toxic to, right. to vegetation and, and, and stuff. Um, with regards to the coral reef, um, sometimes some of the fishes would like to spawn within I mean, those um, um, places. Mm. And if the ambience is not right, it kind of destroys uh, you know, the, the, the ecosystem and the IX, so they're not able to. And for me, I'm not very surprised that these days we don't really have our normal catches that we have mm. because everything has changed. Yeah. You normally would notice that around August and when the weather gets cold, we used to have lots of herrings, but it's not happening anymore. Right. Sometimes some of these things do happen and it doesn't really bring out a very good... Um, um, a very good atmosphere for them to drive in. Mm. And then again, with the, this, this, the SOX or the sulfur uh, dioxide that goes into the atmosphere, most of it is in form of uh, particulates or particles. Mm. And as it, as it, it mixes with other uh, compounds in the atmosphere, it becomes more and more toxic for, for, for use in the atmosphere. But I think that like we are talking about technology. Technology is being harnessed to, to stop some of these things. But when we get there, I want to go a little bit deeper into the technological part in arresting some of these things. OK. All right, so let me come to Captain uh, Samuel Ofuri uh, Dankwa and find out from you um, what the Ghana Maritime is doing, uh, Maritime Authority is doing to curtail some of these uh, things that we, we find uh, in our seas. Uh, for us, like I said, policy implementation is one. Mm and monitoring. In terms of policy implementation, we have the policies already that are from IMO, yeah. as we are a wing of it, mm. and IMO is also a wing of uh, UN. Mm. So we make sure that the policies that are there are well implemented. Mm. Currently, Ghana is lucky to be among one of the best in the West and Central Africa to join the new technology that is coming into phase, that is the autonomous shipping, mm. whereby ships will be run without any crew. And Ghana is part of it. So we have some of the GMA members being part of that section mm. from the Maritime Safety Committee right. that are trying to add up knowledge to that. Mm. And if you talk about the monitoring, like I said earlier on in my submission, we have about six uh, craft patrol boats that normally goes into the sea. We don't go alone. We go with uh, marine uh, police. Yeah. Then we go with Ghana Navy. Okay. So that they, if there's any illegality, they will be added up to do the arrest mm. for us. Okay. So there are a lot of things going on out there. And 
One thing I'm so happy when I joined GMA is that they have a whole unit called the Monitoring and Enforcement Unit. Mm. They, don't, uh, they go around the port every blessed day in a dispersed manner to check every activity at the port. Mm. So once they find anything that will cause the environment to be damaged, the marine environment to be damaged, they will immediately inform the inspectors. Mm. Then you will go there with our knowledge and you will try to see the depth of the illegality. Mm. And so we, like I said, most Takrad is doing the same. And if you go to Ada, we have one of the offices also there. GMA trying to go in a technological advancement. We have what you call the VTMIS. Exactly. That, I Vettel, wanted to find out what, what the, see, the, the status is at the moment. Yes, it's working correctly. Okay. So they normally view the whole ocean for us with mm. cameras, and if they suspect anything, they'll call the craft that is at the port, mm. and they will then zoom in to go and see physically mm. what the issues are about. Mm. Mm. So I think for in a whole, GMA is doing very well mm. with trying to get to the state-of-the-art equipment mm. to monitor our ocean. When you mention state-of-the-art equipment, do you, uh, does that include drones? Yes, yes, mm. yes. And uh, I've heard that. I don't know the depth of it, but so I can't give a lot of information about it. Ghana will receive it very soon so that we will be able to go deep sea mm. and monitor any activities out there. Very well. All right. Uh, so I'm told we can now go for a break. When we bounce back, we'll continue the show. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my Contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now. MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy. 
creating great opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. All right, so you're welcome back. Uh, remember, we're discussing the role of emerging technologies to support a green transition of the maritime sector. And with me in the studios, uh, Dr. Captain Nanao Fusubuatung, who is a senior lecturer and head of nautical studies department at the Regional Maritime University. And also have in the studios, Captain Samuel Ofori Damkwa, who is a senior marine uh, officer at the Ghana Maritime Authority. On the line uh, is Lieutenant Commander Christopher Ama, uh, who is with the Ghana Navy. Uh, he's back there. Uh, we hope that this time the line would be much more helpful. Uh, he is a marine engineer by profession, but he works for the Ghana Navy. Indeed, he's been with them for the past 10 years. Um, I've been told you can activate our phone lines as well. And so you can also call in and contribute to the discussion. You can ask uh, our guests uh, whatever questions that are bothering your mind. We have uh, some of your messages here. We'll be coming to them uh, pretty shortly. But I want to go to um, uh, uh, Dr. Captain Nana Ofosu Boateng and find out from you. I mentioned in my intro uh, that research indicates that uh, global shipping, uh, commercial shipping, uh, constitutes or contributes uh, to 2.5 percent of global, you know, uh, gas em uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And this is uh, expected to escalate to between 50 and 250 percent by the year 2050, which means that there's the need for us to do something real quick to stem the tide. Um, what should we be doing in terms of uh, enhancements uh, of technology to support, you know, going green? Yes, um, thank you very much, Kennedy. Um, there are a lot of things we can do, actually. Um, maybe I'll just touch on some of them, but not all, because mm -hmm. it's, it's quite vast. You know, we, we don't need to reinvent anything. Mm. Just like we have in industry where sometimes we have a byproduct. Doc, before you continue, let me um, announce the phone lines <laughs> so that they can call in. The, the line is 020-552-8353. 020-552-8353. You can call in and contribute to the discussion. Yes. Yes, just like in industry where we have a byproduct and we are able to harness it and, and you know, recycle it and reuse it again for our benefit. So we could do the same thing when it comes to the shipping industry. On the ship, for instance, the ship is always in the water and the hull, if it, it begins to grow and have marine life on it, it reduces the speed of the vessel because mm. it forms a form of drag. And that alone allows the ship to burn more fuel. Right. And that in itself would also, in a more, in a more ripple effect, contribute to more pollution. Mm. We can also, in, in trying to curtail the amount of um, sulfur dioxide that we have mm. and the nitrous oxide that we have, we could introduce technologies like sulfur scrubbers where it is put in the exhaust to eliminate mm more than about 90% of the sulfur content that, that is um, churned out into the atmosphere. Right. Uh, we could also harness the, the heat that is coming from the um, exhaust system, such that there is recirculation and, and that energy which is coming from the heat could also be used by the vessel. Right. We could also harness the, the propellers, right? by making sure that the blades are oriented properly and mm. that they are more energy efficient when it cuts through the water. Mm. We, we could also um, uh, look at the, the ballast system. You know, in, in, in other waters where people introduce alien species into the water, mm. and that causes a lot of problems okay. for the ecosystem. That causes a lot of problems for the ecosystem. Hold it there, and don't forget your lines. When we come back, you continue. But we'll have to welcome um, Iben from Tamale on today's show. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, please shoot. Yes. Um, sir, I think I'll go with doctor. Mm. The only way we can do away with this mess is to educate ourselves as Africans, as Ghanaians, to know the negative impact of all these things. Because if we don't educate ourselves to appreciate the negative effect of all these things, there is no way we are going to get all this problem. And so I think the very investment should do in education so that our people will get to know these uh, things and then the, the effect that comes along with it. Thank you for the nice program. Great. Thank you very much indeed, Ivan, uh, for your call. He's, he called all the way from Tamale. Uh, regards to the people of Tamale. You can also call in the number to dial is 020 Yes, Doc, please continue. 
Yeah, where did I leave off from? I was talking about something. Yes. Uh, can you remind Doc where he was? Uh, he was on the scrubber. Yes. Scrubber yeah, yeah, system. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So the, the, it's it's a device that is that is placed in the um, probably the manifold of the exhaust system. Okay. So it kind of acts as a sieve to take out more of the particulates or the sulfur contents that is in there. Mm. So the air that comes out is more purified and mm. it, it goes into... And then I think I remember now I was talking about the ballast system right? where you have alien species um, being transported into the, the new environment that this vessel finds itself right. in. But this time around, our, the, the new technologies are coming in where you are having ballast-less vessels where there is no ballast, but actually... There are special tanks that are within there that that's all of the the the, the ballast and such that mm. there's a continuous flow of water going in. Mm. So you don't need to actually keep water from a localized place by you know filling your tanks in one port and discharging yeah. it in another one. Mm. So it's more like that place is is empty. And there's a continuous stream of water passing through okay. in in there, and then. Um, uh, also, um, other technologies we we could be looking at uh, sails. You know, um, there's been some experiments using sails. Uh, you know, which used to be the very old system that we're mm. using, but adding a bit of technology to it such that the direction of the wind could be computer controlled, such that you could ar- orient the, the 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 sails in a in a way to catch more wind and mm. maximum effect of the wind. Mm. To use, we could also be looking at electricity, mm. you know, electrical engines right. where they are quieter and cleaner. Mm. We could also be looking at LNG, you know, uh, which which could also produce v- very little carbon footprint. So right. these are some of the things that are going on. Okay. Awesome. Let me come to uh, Captain Samuel uh, of Oridankwa and find out from you whether you can bring us up to speed with the new fuels that are being developed to uh, support the green transition. Yes, thank you. Now, most of the companies that I They're know... are moving from fossil. Yes, to, uh, most of them are now going on uh, methanol. Mm. And I can talk about a classical situation whereby Mexline has started for the past five years, since 2015. Mm. And they have about 15 ships that are running on that and it's safe. Mm. And environmentally safe. So they normally call it triple E. Right. The triple E, it means they are trying to... Uh, I would say work on the environment, they are trying to work on the uh, economy of skill, and at the same time also they are working on the full efficiency. So with that triple E, at one ship that they have, the, before I think the largest ship was uh, 18,000 TU. Right. And now they have 24,000 TU, which is evergreen. Mm. Mess line was having the 18,000. What they did was they increased the width of the ship, mm. And then they just move the accommodation a bit behind so that it can get closer and more cargo space. So they were able to increase the cargo by 15%. And doing so, when they compare the cargo carriage capacity together with the fuel that was supposed to burn, they were able to achieve mm. almost about 50% of fuel reduction mm. in the same uh, carriage capacity. Right. And now the current one, which is uh, ever a lot mm. is having the same length mm. but the breadth has just been increased right and in so doing six thousand pieces of containers is quite huge mm. and they are reducing the fuel by that amount so right. for me it's one of the greatest way by which we can go awesome let's go on to the uh, phone lines and welcome engineer george uh, who's calling us all the way from takwa uh, engineer good evening sir yeah as soon as the vessel is moving mm. uh, it is firing it is burning Mm. And we have fuel uh, and some other substances that contribute to uh, this firing order in the system. Mm. It's a fact that we cannot eliminate uh, the waste because that is the product of the burning. But we have to make sure that the system we are managing is sustainable. Sustainability has to do with a balancing act where our activities we are taking presently could be curtailed in such a way that the ripple effect it will have in the near future could be minimized. Right. We should, in the long term, look at the kind of 
poor we use in a version mm. if there can be certain substances per manufacturing which can minimize do if they should release into the atmosphere mm. it can minimize uh, the harm it can cause uh, on even the aquatic bodies mm. because if care is not taken uh, our operations can cause so harm to extent that uh, some years to come it might be devastating and the generation to come cannot survive based on our operation so we have to employ more technology moving into a specific thinking, thinking curve we can assist the whole ecosystem thank you Thank you very much indeed, Engineer George, uh, for that wonderful and lucid uh, submission. Uh, he called us all the way from uh, Tapwa. We, we, are, we are grateful to you. I understand. I'll come back to uh, the studio, but let me go on to, the, uh, to Zoom and then uh, conclude with uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, Christopher Ama, who is still with us. I hope uh, this time the lines are uh, okay. Uh, let me just find out from you, uh, Commander. I, I put a question to uh, uh, Captain uh, Samuel Ofori Dankwa as to some of the new fuels that have been developed to uh, support the green transition. Um, I, I, I shudder to say you, you have some uh, information to share with uh, respect to that. Thank you very much, Mona. Um, with respect to fuels, uh, among the proposed alternative fuels for shipping, we have a liquefied natural gas, as he mentioned. We have the liquefied petroleum gas, methanol, biofuels, and then hydrogen. They are the Well, I think <laughs> we're still having this. Yes. We're still having the same issue. LNG. Please, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I, th I think the line is bad. I uh, would, would uh, just say a big thank you to uh, Lieutenant uh, uh, Commander. Uh, the lines have not been helpful at all. Uh, that's, uh, these are some of the things you suffer when you uh, depend uh, on, on technology so much. Okay, my production team says we can try for the last time. Uh, please go ahead, let's see. Commander. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so when it comes to carbon dioxide with respect to LNG, it's the fossil fuel which produces the least amount of carbon dioxide. However, the challenge with LNG is that it has methane slip challenges, which helps to reduce its benefit when you compare it to heavy fuel oil and then the marine gas oils. So methane slip has about 25 to 30 years times in terms well, I think that we just because we have barely four or three minutes to even wrap up. So let me come to uh, uh, Dr. Captain Nana Ofosubuating and find out from you whether you think that we can attain green uh, zero emissions, zero emissions, you know, by the year 20, by in, in 20 years' time. Zero emissions by in 20 years. Is that possible? To be, <clears throat> to be fair to everybody, I think it, it will be a very tall order. <laughs> mm. I mean, I don't want to sound like a, a prophet of doom, but that would be a very difficult thing. Because even looking at the, the, the quantum of money that we'll have to inject in with, with regards to infrastructure, both on land and that uh, at sea also, mm. it will be a very tall order to, to meet that goal. Right. It will be a tall order. Um, Captain. Samuel, Ufori Damkwa, do you agree in 20 years' time? Can we enjoy uh, zero emissions? I also say uh, others can, but maybe with Africa, it will take us a little more years. Okay. Like we said, training is a key thing. Mm. All inclusiveness, the conscience of people trying to accept that aspect of new technology is a key thing. Mm. For me, the shipping aspect, most of the um, ship owners and the ship builders have done so well because those days we're depending on weather forecasts and our own judgment to get the best possible routes. Right. But these days, they are using technology, mm. advanced technology to get the shortest possible route that is safe. Right. The, uh, getting the shortest route doesn't mean it is full economized, mm. but it means the 
other element of current, ocean waves, and all those things have been catered for. Right. If you talk about the design of the ship itself, you, it has been catered for by our region here. Mm. How are we prepared right. not to think of even the shipping in the, uh, the fishing industry right. where most of the fi uh, fishing boat they are using mm. is a big challenge right. for you to tell them to change fuel. Okay. So we will take time. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Captain, uh, this one says, good evening, sir. Please, how do I locate the head office of the Ghana Maritime Authority? Um, this one is from Samuel Kabu in Accra. Okay, my production team will finish you with that information. This one says, good evening. Uh, the three gentlemen on the show are brilliant. The future of our waters uh, safe is safe. And this one says, okay, there's another one uh, from this particular uh, texter who says, uh, on, on the Golden Jubilee Terminal, well, we'll forward it to the appropriate authorities for redress. Uh, this is how we draw the curtain on tonight's edition of Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. Remember, we've been discussing the role of uh, emerging technologies to support a green transition of the maritime sector uh, coming on the back of International Maritime Day, which was on the 29th of September 2022. That was last Thursday. Uh, I say a big thank you to Dr. Uh, Captain Nana Fosubuatin, who is a senior lecturer and head of Nautical Studies Department, Regional Maritime University. I also say a big thanks to um, Captain Samuel Ofori Dankwa, uh, senior Marine Officer at the Ghana Maritime Authority. And indeed, Lieutenant Commander Christopher Ama, Marine Engineer, is with the Ghana Navy. Uh, for joining us all the way from Takradi. Uh, we entreat you to watch the abridged version of Iron Port on Wednesday at GT on GTV at 8.30 p.m. Indeed, uh, we shall also entreat you to keep watching the rest of our programs for tonight. And we say a big thank you to our sponsors, Ghana Maritime Authority, that's Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel Company Limited, Serene Insurance, uh, Ghana Link Network Services, and indeed Meridian Port Services, MPS. The show is powered, as usual, by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, GPHA. My name is Kennedy Mona. God willing, we shall come your way again with another wonderful edition of the show next week Sunday. Have a super weekend and keep enjoying the rest of our programs. Good evening.